Hello Photoshop Senior Edition folks. Well as you can see we're not in Photoshop anymore. We're in Lightroom. We're going to work on this young lady's eyes. Uh, there's a lot of cool things that we can do in Lightroom and I really like working on the eyes and there's built-in things you can do with the iris and so forth inside of Lightroom but I think having complete control over it uh, is a little bit better. So <clears throat> I went through the usual steps of getting my image and import photo and videos. So let's just get this going inside of Lightroom and click on the, if, if you don't have it open already, click on the develop module and let's get started. We don't need any of these right now, so I'm just going to go over to this little left arrow and get rid of that panel for right now. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to start off with using the adjustment layer and, and actually in there too. Uh, we just go up here and click on the little icon for the adjustment brush and obviously we can change anything about the image that we want to within these particular panels. So we're going to start off maybe just uh, zooming in would help because the eyes are the only thing that we want to work on. So I'm actually going to have to open my panel just temporarily just by moving it over here the panel pops up and I'm going to switch this to 4 to 1 so I can actually get in there and see everything in great detail. Now the first thing I'm going to do is lighten the pupils up a bit. So we can just click on the adjustment tool <clears throat> and we're going to move the uh, slider exposure to the positive side a little bit. I just want to show you something really quick because uh, sometimes I'll get to adjusting things in uh, side of Lightroom and I decide that I just want to get back to where I was. Now this has nothing to do with making lots of other changes. I don't want to click on reset and reset the entire image if I've done several things. But if I just want to reset the sliders I can hold down my Alt key or Option key on a Mac and double click on any one of these and they will go back to center spot. So that saves some time. Of course if we just have one uh, slider that's over and we want to go back to center you just move to where that slider is and double click uh, on your mouse and it will go back to center. Okay so let's get started on the eyes and let's take the exposure up just a little bitty bit and we need to go down and have a look at our brush. We move it into the image. Obviously you can um, <clears throat> change the the flow which is right now super high I'll put that in, in the middle uh, I always use the density all the way over if you're thinking in terms of density and flow density is uh, just basically paints with a normal or adjusts colors whatever you want to call it with a normal flow it doesn't build up as you keep going over it and over it and over it but flow, if you crank it up and just hold your mouse down and go over it and over it and over it, it builds up and builds up and builds up sometimes very quickly. So I usually uh, play with the flow a little bit, but I keep the density at 100. And let's just go over to the eye. Now, since we're painting in an area that has this nice dark outline around it, it will allow us to use the auto mask which I think is on by default if not go ahead and click that on and then when you paint it's only going to paint within that area now if we move the flow forward <clears throat> wanted to make sure it was actually working um, 
and let's take the exposure up just a little bit more so you can actually see that it's working had I not let's just I can reset this if I want to because uh, we haven't done anything else in the image or I can just go up to this little tag and right click on it and delete it or I could have just taken it back to center up here I, I want to go ahead and I'm going to turn that on pretty high and I'm going to take the auto mask off <clears throat> and do the same thing now you see if I'm painting uh, and obviously that was really sloppy I'll control Z a couple of times let's make the brush bigger so we paint and it's painting inside and outside of that area All right control Z if I turn the auto mask on and paint it is painting within the high definition area or the high contrast lines basically so it's only affecting what's inside there uh, it's not good for all kinds of things or uh, lots of things but something like this uh, it really comes into play very nicely let's let's just go up there and, and turn this down quite a bit because we don't want it that high and let's look at the before and if we want to see all the way back to the beginning if we get lots of these uh, tags for adjustments up there uh, all you have to do is hit the back slash not the forward slash but the slash that's usually above the enter key and it goes back to the beginning so you can see uh, we've upped the amount of light considerably and we can as long as this is there and it always will be um, and you don't add anything else in the image just these two eyes are affected by it and you see the mask and because we didn't feather it or anything it's kind of a harsh looking edge uh, the flow was really really high not down lower where it had been smoother flow but anyway um, if we want to uh, create a new one and, and I want you to think about these as being layers because each one we have we put different things on so if I go up here and click on uh, new we, we will get another one of these in a different area so now we have that one now it's time to turn that flow down so it's not so dramatic. I'm going to right click on that, delete it. Let's go back down to the flow. I'm going to turn the auto mask on, off again because I don't need it so badly now. But let's, uh, let's click there again, see how much nicer that is now, not so uh, harsh as it was with the uh, flow way up okay so I want to uh, uh, whiten uh, the areas a little bit around uh, the I iris so I'm going to feather this a little bit so I don't uh, get too harsh with it and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller left bracket key right bracket key just like in Photoshop I'm going to uh, certainly turn the whites down a little bit and just do a little stroke just outside that area a little bit in there I don't really know that we're adding too much but we can go back here at exposure and run it up if we want to we just want to add a little bit let's let's double click on this number and let's change because sometimes it's hard to get that slider just exactly where you want let's try 15 and just hit enter now let's look at the before and after the backslash again not really seeing a lot of white if you want to hide these uh, just press H and then you can look at the before and after maybe we can bump uh, the exposure a little bit more 
Now let's see. Still not much showing. And as long as the black, uh, if this one's not black, so this is the one that we're editing right now. So if we click on that one, we're back to working on the iris. So go back to this one again. I'm not really get. there's a little more white there. Let's see the before and after there. Hide those again. Okay, let's run it up a little bit more. Just so we can see it. I'm going to hide those tags. Yeah, we've got we've got some additional white in there now. All right. And let's go out and do the one and one here so we can do the before and after and see it. Yeah, that looks that looks nice. All right, back to the 4 to 1. And let's just work on uh making the line around the Isis iris uh, darker so let's go back up click on new and obviously we're gonna have to have a smaller brush if we go down here we have an A and B brush that we can use so this brush is a lot smaller I'm gonna knock the feather down on that I really don't want that feathered much let's go a little bit more and we'll just that's not where I want it sorry about that I want to go right around the edge here and the problem is I'm not changing the light darkness I'm making it lighter uh, so let's see here what we can do and it's easy to go too far with this and I've got the brush too big but let's zoom out and see what it looks like. That's the the real test. So let's let's just uh, do the before and after. Yeah, that's that's pretty big, pretty dark. So let's move the exposure up a little bit. Before and after, that looks a lot better. All right. So now we've got three of the tags inside the eyes. Uh, let's zoom in again and go to four to one and this time I'm going to put another new uh, tag up here uh, I'm going to soften this up a little bit so let's go down to the B brush and I'm going to still use the the uh, minus exposure for this and I want to brush uh, just around above the eye kind of darken that area a little bit now if we turn the exposure down further you can see the effect that we're having kind of creating a little bit of a smoky effect in there and let's do the before and let's turn those tags off for a minute and see the difference that we're making in the eye now okay so let's go into the corners of the eyes and take a little of the the red out now these eyes uh, don't have very much red in them but let's click on new and we'll just go to saturation and take it down and we'll just look and see what we're doing here so let's take this saturation down some more and you don't want to go crazy taking the red out you don't want to take every bit of it out because that's also uh, gonna put a level of fakeness in it so to speak uh, I'm going to do the backslash again so I can see how the image has changed okay we're looking pretty good another thing I would probably like to do here is add she's got a little uh, color here that she's 
got in the eyes. I'm going to enhance that a little bit. But it's, instead of keep going up here to New and clicking that each time, we can just press the letter K as in kangaroo twice real fast, just KK. And that will see that we've got a plus tab on there now. So if I go up here and start painting, that sets a new tag. If I press H again to show the tags, you can see there's that one right there. And what I'm going to do is um, kind of move it over to a more purpley color here and just kind of add some more. Maybe make the brush a little bit bigger. Come down here. Just add what we what looks good to your eye. And let's do the H to hide the tags. And now the backslash. And you can see the difference that we made there. Again, let's uh, go out to the 1 and 1 ratio. 1, 2, 1. And now the backslash. So you can see we've made a dramatic change in the, the eyes. And we can go back to any one of these tags by pressing X or H, sorry, for a hide. Uh, we can click on any one of those and go back and adjust it. Just like a layer inside of Photoshop, they're hiding that information and we're allowed to go back into it and change it anytime we want. So that's really, really nice feature inside of Lightroom. I'm going to do one last thing before I close this. I'm going to zoom back in on the image and I'm going to put a little shadowing into the corners. So let's do the KK again and we load up a new brush and this time I'm going to uh, go down on the exposure and if any of your sliders are somewhere where they shouldn't be just double click it because we don't want to change the saturation here we're only messing with the exposure and we're just going to go in here paint a little bit maybe in here just a tad I'm going to push the H key to hide those so I are not in my way and of course we can't adjust that one uh, let's do the H or the backslash sorry now we've made some pretty dramatic changes to the eye and I think they're positive you have to be the judge when you're working on eyes uh, to see that you're making a positive change and like I say if those uh, tags are still there and they always will be unless you're hiding them uh, they allow you to go back in and readjust and you can certainly uh, make those eyes look as great as you want to uh, try to be subtle with your changes go too far too fast and and you're, you're probably just going to uh, make your person uh, look worse uh, make them look a little fakey if you're not careful uh, but again if if you zoom back out and you look at your image uh, and you say well that's over the top all you have to do is press that H and go back in and adjust any one of those that you feel like you need to and that's a beautiful thing inside of Lightroom okay we have Domini's eyes pretty much where I would like for them to be in this image uh, but I don't know if everyone knows this or not but if you go under if you're in the develop module and you're up here at the top and if this is unchecked you won't see that but you check right here if you click on custom and go down towards the bottom and I know you can't see all of this let me move this down and now if we click on custom you see we have teeth whitening soften skin and the iris enhance now I don't care much for the iris enhance it's okay I like to do what we just got through doing uh, I think it gives you more uh, control over things than 
than this particular thing does. But skin softening and teeth whitening can be very nice. Now, obviously, in this image, we don't have the ability to change uh, what the teeth look like, but we can certainly do some uh, uh, skin softening if we want to. So let's just click on that, and let's see what we can do with... Uh, let me turn those pins off here. And make sure that your auto mask is turned off. And you can certainly uh, affect this by density and flow. I'm going to turn my flow all the way up. <clears throat> and I've got a, a little bit of feather going on. And, and in softness, I don't think that's a bad thing. So we just begin painting uh, around the face. And it can be a, a fairly large brush to paint with. And you see what we can do. And as I hit these places that have the little pixels, you see how they are diminishing. And let's just go bigger here. And we can also run that density up a little bit more. That's the before, right here, and the after. And I'm zoomed in four to one, as you can see right here. Let me just back this out, hit this one to one, and let's do it before and after. And we've got still this chin area here. I'm left using the left bracket key located there next to the letter P. Like anything inside of Photoshop or Lightroom, you can go too far. So you just don't want to get carried away. This is before again and after. See those transitions of light and dark areas and the freckles and so forth are diminished uh, using this uh, skin softening technique. So if we go back to fit on the image and do a before and after, you can see the amount of difference there. It can be quite striking. Move this down a little bit. Again, before and after. So we've made a, a great deal of difference with the eyes uh, and with the, the softening uh, of the skin. And obviously... Uh, much like Photoshop, you can go over here to where the history is and, and just start going back, back, back until, um, see, we've undone almost all of that that, that we had there. So it's not like you're uh, stuck with what you get. And remember, if I press H, here is the... Uh, mass that represents what we've changed. You see a few places up here that haven't been softened. So we could pay attention to those as well. Uh, we can also right click on that and delete it if we've gone too far and we don't just don't like it. Uh, we can delete that and do it all over again with a softer hand so to speak. And to do it with a softer hand, we're basically coming over here and changing the flow and the density. Okay, so you can change things that way. Now another thing, obviously, we can do is work on the mouth 
if we want to change the color of it or so forth or darken it lighten it whatever we want to do we simply uh, go and and click on a, another adjustment brush but now we don't want to soften the skin right so we're going to let's just say we're going to go into the uh, exposure and this time we uh, well, let's just darken the lipstick down a little bit so we we just paint along the lips and I've got the feather pretty high so again you can adjust that feather however you want to be you see our target there and if we hover over it it will show us the mass that we have and then let's zoom out let's do a one one and one there and uh, let's just do a before and after so you see all of the changes that we made now if, if we want to go back you notice that's where the black dot is so that's the active dot still yet uh, we can change the color uh, of the lips to suit our purpose as well maybe not quite that direction and let's do it before and after so we've definitely made some changes to it uh, and I'm, I'm comfortable with the look that we have. Again, if you want to turn those dots off, just press the letter H and those go away. So uh, these are some uh, fine adjustments that we can make to the human face, uh, for better or for worse. We have to ask the person that we're working on whether they prefer uh, what we've done to it or not. But let me also remind you, uh, while we have the dots back on here, I made the cheek the um, active uh, dot on here, the tag, so we could see that whole mask. Notice over here in our sliders that clarity is all the way to the left. Well, this is where the softness comes from. If we go to the right with that, we undo the softness that we put on it. We can change this clarity uh, and, and completely negate what we did or go all the way back or somewhere in between. We don't have to over soften, over sharpen. If we go obviously to the right it is, but maybe somewhere in there and let's do a before and after and you can see how much we've sharpened there. Um, or softened, I'm sorry. Let's go a little bit more and then before and after. I think that looks pretty nice. Um, so there are lots of things that we can do in here with the adjustment tool. We just got to remember that when we're adding these adjustments, we want to hit new each time we go in and work on anything in particular. Okay? So let me know if you have any questions. I am here for you. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.